labor and uh, social security. And better yet, at a time when we are signing a memorandum of understanding between the Ministry of Labor and Social Security through one of its very important systems, the LMI system, but most importantly, with uh, an institution that has made its name over these many years called UTEC, formerly CAST. So it's very important that we forge this kind of relationship. And as you are aware, an MOU really is not a legal document, but it certainly lays out the understanding between the partners. So we're happy for this moment, and we're going to get straight into it. Uh, I think for by way of introductions, we have to my immediate right the only Carl Samuda, the Honorable Carl Samuda, or Minister of Labor and Social Security. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and to... Yes, and then, and then now to the side minister is the, the, the president of, of UTEC, and, and that is Mr. Colin Giles. I got that right? Good. And we, we also have among us the chief executive officer of the ministry, the, the, the hardworking permanent secretary. You may not see her on a, on a regular basis, but she is beside, behind the scenes, keeping the wheels turning, and keeping us in check. So, yes, welcome. And we also have with us the, the Senior Director for Planning and Development at UTEC, Mrs. Denise Stevenson Hamill. There she is, right. And uh, we also have with us um, Mrs. Simone McKenzie, Muir, and she is our acting corporate planner. And uh, Simone, yeah, right, just wait, right, good. And of course, we have the, the media and other members of the ministry unit with us. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are all very warmly welcome. We are very patriotic, and so I'm going to ask you now to stand for. Jamaica's national anthem, please. You're going to sing? Oh, Lord. So, in that case, I'm not a good singer, so um, you know what? I'm going to ask the, the lady who's going to pray, Paulette Brown, to come. She's one of our project managers, and she will take you through the national anthem. And because we're going to sing, you know, we have to sing two verses. Instrumentally, we'll just do one. Paul? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm not a very good singer, so we'll all sing together. That's the two. One, two.
Thank you, Mimi. And then, as we go before God in prayer, most rightly and Heavenly Father, we thank you today for life. We thank you for bringing us all here safely this morning. And as we come before you, Jesus, we ask that you guide us the proceedings that we have this morning, where we join to end you together. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that we can come as a, a, together in one purpose. Father, we ask that whatever happens today, Lord, will be done in your will and your honor and your glory. As we give you thanks, Lord, and we say, after this proceeding is over, Lord, we ask that you continue to guide and protect us, Lord, as we go to our ways. And we, do, we say thanks in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be having the opening remarks. And this will be made by our permanent secretary, Mrs. Collette Roberts Richardson. Yes. Mr. Master of Ceremonies, Banga Palmer, Honorable Carl Samudo, Minister of Labor and Social Security. Professor Giles, President of the University of Technology, other members of the UTEC family and ministry family, as well as members of the media, good morning. Let me echo the welcome offered by Mr. Palmer to all of you to the signing of this Memorandum of Understanding between the Ministry of Labor and Social Security and the University of Technology. This union is crucial at this time in helping to alleviate some of the negative impact of the novel coronavirus on the labor market. The global pandemic has disrupted the market, slowed economic growth, ultimately has negatively impacted the lives of many persons, especially those who have lost their jobs. COVID-19 has pushed us far faster along the continuum to the fourth globe industrial revolution. And what we now have, well, what we now refer to as the new normal. This comes with a drastic change in the world of work for most people. The way we do things have certainly changed. When we plan a meeting now, the first thing is, is it virtual or face-to-face? -face? Before, nobody contemplated virtual. And if I must tell you, about two years ago, within the ministry, we um, embraced Office 365. And I kept saying, because we have officers across the island, and I kept saying, the officers don't need to come in for meetings. They just need to join us virtually because we have this platform. And people just could not get the hang of it. Well, no, uh, all of our meetings are not virtual, but I think 90% of them are now virtual, especially with our parish offices and our outstation. So COVID-19, if there's one positive from COVID-19, is that it has certainly pushed us faster into that fourth industrial revolution where we have been forced to embrace some of the technological changes. And as I speak to technology, I remember when I was in high school, the chairman spoke about CAST and UTEC, but when I was in high school, the technological areas or the technical areas were not the glamour areas. And, you know, it was often thought that if you weren't so bright, you went to the secondary school. And if you were bright, you went to the traditional high school. Well, who is laughing now? I think all the persons who went into technology, those areas are you now laughing, uh, certainly a better tune than many other persons. So with COVID-19, we have seen an increase in unemployment, and the partnership between the ministry and UTEC is, will certainly be a great step towards protecting work and trying to ensure that the graduates of the University of Technology 
are afforded through the labor market information system greater opportunities and access to jobs on the labor market. The labor market information system will allow those well-trained graduates of the University of Technology to be channeled into the labor market. The opportunity will be realized through the use of the LMIS. The LMIS has been integral in providing labor market information that has been used by education and training institutions to inform curriculum development, students, guidance counselors, and in particular, job seekers to ensure that they are connected with the jobs on the market that are available and their skill sets. Efforts have been made to ensure that the labor market information system remains relevant and user friendly. And last year in the ministry, we launched an app where persons can access the, you know, everything now is on the App Store, the Google Play Store or the iOS. So last year we launched an app and since the launch of the app, we have seen an upsurge in the use of our labor market information system. And I'm pleased to advise that despite that launch of that app last year, we are moving again this year, later this year, to enhance, further enhance our labor market system and our ELE system to ensure that it continues to remain relevant with and satisfy the changing demands out there. If there is one thing that COVID has taught us is that we need to be agile, we need to be quick to adapt to change and embrace and do what we need to do to make things work. As the labor market information system continues to improve its capacity to supply a reliable source of labor market information, I'm happy that through this partnership, more job readiness sessions will be conducted with the aid in in preparing more job seekers for the world of work. Furthermore, this partnership between the ministry and UTEC, we can better coordinate career development activities that will better serve the needs of the Jamaican people. As a ministry, we continue to play our role in national development, and in particular, in developing our workforce. And so we look this partnership as we roll out all the facets. Thank you very much. And thank you, UTEC. <laughs> thank you very much, PS. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I should have advised you earlier that we are not just confined to the four walls surrounding us, but I think we are very much global at this moment because we are streaming live on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, and of course the JIS platforms. So we're really gone worldwide. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to invite to bring his remarks now, none other than the president of the University of Technology, uh, Professor Jais. Professor Jais. Thank you very much, Mr. Palmer, Honorable Minister Samuda, Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Colette Roberts Risden, other members of the team at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, members of the team who are here with me, Senior Director for International and Institutional Linkages, Dr. Pierre Sutton, Mr. Um, Mrs. Denise Stevenson Hamill, Senior Director for Planning and other members of the team, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, all, good morning. It is indeed my pleasure to be here this morning at this very important MOU signing. This 
event is one that speaks eloquently to the type of collaboration that the University of Technology Jamaica delights in. As a national university, we are established by an act of the Jamaican Parliament. And a part of our function, a primary focus of our existence is to support the development of our country. We take that mandate very seriously. And we have been trying in all that we do to support the development of our country through the generation or the production, the training of graduates who are skilled to function in the job market in just about all the different spheres of the country, all the different professional and technical spheres. We have been doing this for over 62 years, having been started as the Jamaica Institute of Technology in 1958. And throughout various walks of life, we have new tech graduates making their mark. But this particular partnership is one that I know will benefit students, graduates of UTEC Jamaica. I'm sure it will benefit the labor market information system also, and Jamaica as a whole, by bringing together departments and agencies of the government of Jamaica that are geared in their operations to strengthen access to data that informs market intelligence and also supports access to information for job seekers and also for employers who are seeking to find the right fit for their various establishments. So I just want to indicate that this thrust of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security through its labor market in information system is one that will certainly help our students and the university to achieve some of the things that we have tried to do through various initiatives and activities. For example, we have our annual job fair, we have expos, and we have other events like that that are geared at ensuring that our students are properly informed as to their options and also put them in touch with employers so that they can be adequately apprised of the opportunities that are available. But I note that the labor market information system will also provide not only online but offline access to guidance in terms of preparation of resumes and things like that that will help the students present themselves in the best way. And not only that, but I note that there will be opportunities for accessing this database for research purposes, which is something important to our university. Because as we are aware, universities are about scholarship, teaching and learning, and research. And so we would like to play our part in contributing to the research that goes into the information that will go on the LMIS. And not only that, but it will be available to us as, an, as, a, as a database that will allow us to mine, that can allow us to make appropriate decisions. So in closing, I just want to thank Minister Samuda for supporting and for endorsing this partnership by being here today. And I'd like to thank all those who are part in making this possible. Because I know that a lot of work has gone on behind the scenes. And I just want to recognize those who have made that possible, both from the University of Technology Jamaica and also from the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. So I just want to thank you all. And I look forward to a very successful and productive engagement through this partnership in establishing the, the 
labor market, information system, and whatever other elements of the collaboration that I know will benefit both parties and Jamaica as a whole. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Giles. Ladies and gentlemen, he needs absolutely no introduction to you. Uh, new on the block at the Ministry of Labor, but, and I've known him for a very long time. I've followed his political career. But in recent times in our discourse, I have discovered that if there is a senior citizen in Jamaica who embraces technology and who is very or fay with the technology, it has to be Minister Carl Samuda. I now invite him to come and address you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Permanent Secretary, Professor, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure for me to be here this morning. And you know, while I sat there and listened, as I have done in the past and I will continue to do, I guess, certain thoughts occurred to me and I decided that I would disband with my written presentation and just speak on a subject that is really quite near and dear to my heart, question of education, an advancement of the human being through higher learning. To say it's a pleasure to be here to sign or the, to witness the signing of this MOU is putting it mildly. I've had experience with Dutech, the more things change, the more they remain the same. But I've had some good times relating to our involvement with the Ministry of Education and the students at UTEC. From time to time, it gets a little um, heated. But everything works out to the better. Now, this MOU that we are signing is a collaboration between the Ministry of Labor and National Security and UTEC. And I am not aware of any other MOU that has been signed that is similar to this in Jamaica yet. It obviously must be the precursor to what is to be something to be engaged across the country. Because in the final analysis, our objective is to reach out. Our objective is to communicate information that is available to us and to make it possible for persons who would otherwise not be seized of the kind of information that is collected at the Ministry of Labor. That would not be uh, readily available to students and to the um, administrators and professors at the various learning institutions. One of the things that has plagued us over the years is the determination of just what strategy to employ in order to communicate what we have and what we pride ourselves in, and that is a group of people who are highly intelligent, well-trained, and ready for the jobs that are available to them. The question is they're not always seized of what are those jobs. And in turn, those who are to employ these persons really don't have a full knowledge of what labor market is available and how to tap into that labor market. I think this is a great idea for exposing what is available in terms of jobs after they leave the university and also when they are about to leave the university, what direction they can head in because they would be seized of all the facts relating to the various professions, professional activities that, can, that they can be engaged in. So what we have really been able to accomplish
accomplish here is a method by which we are trying to overcome the impact that has been thrust on us by the COVID pandemic. This pandemic has attacked the very basis on which an economy can go. And that is in the productive sector, where people need to get jobs, need to work, need to be out in the field of work, in, in the field of, of various professions in which they are engaged. The pandemic has been a restrictive force. Many people look at it in a pessimistic way. And I guess it could be likened to the 2008 economic meltdown that I went through myself as Minister of Industry and Commerce at the time. But we were able to cope. We were able to implement strategies that would enable us to be on the cutting edge of change, to enhance our skills, to market our products, and to be able to restore the economy of Jamaica collaboration and hard work. Collaboration with the private and public sector. In this instance, not only do we have collaboration with the private and public sector, but with academia, with the educational system. And so this partnership is even more meaningful, but it has to be more meaningful because the impact of COVID on us is the most debilitating experience that we have experienced as a nation, and I dare say all countries of the world are going through the same process and are searching for the answers to the problems that confront them. How do we continue to educate our youngsters and older folks as well, senior people, and how do we connect them to the workplace in a safe environment? How do we guarantee the standards that are required internationally in a circumstance where there cannot be ease of communication and contact. And this is one example of an effort that seeks to address that. The Permanent Secretary made a very pertinent point. Historically, Young people would want to go to, they would go into high school and they would, if so inclined, they would take the academic school. That is those areas and those universities, those high schools that are geared to providing education to enter the academic universities where you're just involved in research and in areas that are considered not as practical that applies to the workplace and the great need. UTEC is that plus more. UTEC, I, my understanding of UTEC and my exposure to UTEC is that UTEC provides an intellectual uh, development through academia and at the same time applies all the learning to a practical situation, almost providing the student with a job-ready experience. It is in this job-ready experience that this particular facility is going to be very useful, most useful, because the lag time between graduation and employment can be sometimes very discouraging, very debilitating, very frustrating. But this will enable the students to, to be well ahead of the game by being prepared for what is available in the marketplace. So I agree with you, Piers. It is the practical side of education that has to be emphasized as we go forward. I was conveying to the Permanent Secretary and some members of the team, I think only yesterday or perhaps the day before, that there are new strategies now being employed where academia has to adjust itself to teaching courses that at the end of it gives certification but takes a quarter of the time because they are more focused on particular areas. I speak specifically of the computer area, where students are taught over a period of one year 
all that is necessary to make them efficient at the use of computers and programming that can get them into the jobs immediately and at very comparable salaries, if not better salaries. Because they are ready to go to work the moment they leave their final exam. A practical approach. In the old days, you would say you would teach people to be um, good mechanics or to be engineers, but not engineers as we often tend to mistake engineers and put them all in the same category. There are some engineers that you have to go through a, a rigorous course at the university level, and there are those that are called engineers or they, they, they attach themselves to the term engineers, but they're really on a more practical basis. So a boiler room engineer is usually someone who has practical experience in handling a boiler room. Very critical. But it is the, it is the, the mix between providing academic study that leads to traditional type profession and the emerging need for work that is practical through technicians. And the term technicians associated with the university is sometimes seen as, oh, a, 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 a reduced status. Nothing of the sort. A good technician. I'll give you an example. There is hardly anything more important in the running of a hospital than the engineer who is responsible for the boiler room. Because without that boiler room, Nothing works upstairs. To give you an example. Now, I don't know the extent to which you will be embarking on a broadening of those types of training practices. But I do know that so far, my experience is that UTEC has done an excellent job in providing students with the technical side of education that makes them more job ready than in the areas of the arts and so forth. So this engagement today will give us a broad, broad database, exposure to a tremendous database. But even peers in maintaining the database so that it can provide the greatest opportunity for the university. It has to be formatted in a way that is accessible and user friendly. Accessible and user friendly. And it serves to inform not just the university but the ministry itself. Because as minister, in the short time I've been here, it has occurred to me that one of the functions that you have assigned me involves the granting of permissions for people to work in Jamaica. And when I look at the type of jobs that are being filled, or request to be filled by foreigners. Immediately what jumps out at me is why aren't we providing more people in Jamaica to fill these jobs? Why are we being flooded with requests for employment, for employees to do jobs that I am absolutely certain that the university is turning out graduates to fill. So we can't on the one hand be spending a fortune to educate our young men and women so that they'll be able to take their rightful place in the workplace. And on the other hand, we have a facility that is accelerating the pace at which we give work permits for people to come in and take those jobs. And why? 
I ask, should financial investment in a country not take into consideration the importance of doing an intense research exercise to determine what are the skill sets that exist in that country before making the investment. And that is coming full circle to this database. This database must inform foreigners who are proposing to come and establish business in Jamaica that here is what we have to offer. It is as valuable a, a, a consideration to determining location of business and as any other consideration. The human capital. To what extent do we provide adequate human capital? And once it is determined that there is this great need for human capital, then the need is there for you, Prof, to accelerate the pace at which you turn them out. We should not be importing labor which is really essentially what the work permit system provides. We should be exporting labor. We should, we should provide skills appropriate to the international workplace so that if we have that level of demand, then all we have to do is turn them out, adequately trained to face the workplace internationally. I don't buy into this business that we are small, so we must be contained. And that we must be satisfied. No. I come from a school that says, given an opportunity, we have vast quantities of talented youngsters. All they need is access to training. All they need is an opportunity. And so, all I've said, P.S., comes down to one simple thing. That for my tenure in the Ministry of Labor, the business of handing out work permits will not be an automatic system. It will be carefully examined. Already it has started. Carefully examined to determine whether or not that job that is being requested can be filled here in Jamaica by someone who is trained in Jamaica. You cannot have unemployment, and COVID has shown us one thing for sure. Our unemployment rate has gone up since this pandemic. We were on the right track. We were doing exceptionally well as an economy. But we have been, all our efforts have been curtailed. Now we have to make sure that we safeguard those valuable assets that we were developing before COVID. We have to make sure that we safeguard to the maximum all those talented people. Keep them in their jobs. And if, the, if it is that because of the downturn in the economy and affecting the whole world, that we have to cut back, the businesses have to cut back, let us then turn to that which is making Jamaica so attractive so that people are every day applying for work permits to come here. They're not coming here on vacation. They're not coming for vacation. They're not going to the beaches. They are coming here to work and to produce goods and services. And an essential part of the production of those goods and services is labor. And you're in the labor business. That's what a university does. Produce qualified labor. So if we are producing qualified labor, why am I sitting here approving work permits? It's like filling a dam and have a hole at the bottom. Those days of automaticity with the issuing of permits are over. 
are over. There's going to be a requirement for an appropriate discussion as to the scarcity of that job before we open up and take, go ahead and bring them in. Because if we don't, later on, we're going to regret it. So I thought that it has been bubbling up inside of me ever since I sat at the desk the first day. And I just thought that I would share my thoughts with you today. So, Professor, your mission is to do all you can to accelerate the pace by which you can train young people to fill the vacancies that exist in the country. The permanent secretary's job is to inform you of what jobs are available what resources are available and are at your disposal. And I'm sure that working as a team, in full collaboration with each other, the ministry and the university will be strengthened enormously and it will redound to the benefit of the growth and development of our country. Thank you very much. Wow, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. See, this can only happen, and it comes with age and experience and a collectivity of wisdom over the years. And in, in this regard, no speechwriter, doesn't matter how good you are, could have scripted the presentation that we have had from the minister. He spoke, he spoke his truths, and he spoke from the heart. Minister, thank you very much, sir. I now invite, I now invite uh, Simone Mackenzie Muir to come now with the closing remarks, following which we will go straight ahead into the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding, bringing it into being. Simone. Minister of Labor and Social Security, Honorable Carl Samuda, President of the University of Technology, Professor Colin Giles, Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Colette Roberts Risden, Specially Invited Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, currently streaming online, a pleasant good morning to you all. It is indeed an honor to deliver this closing remark at such an important event. After the wealth of knowledge presented by the Honorable Minister, Madame Pierce, and the President of our prestigious UTEC, one could not ignore the inescapable emphasis which has been placed on the importance of technology to our survival in this new normal and as some have coined it, the abnormal normal. Our presenters have articulated the reliance on technology and education, which is shaping our economy, the labor market, and the type of workers we need today. It should therefore be emphasized that this momentous partnership is truly needed at this time as the supply of skills in technology must meet the demands of the now technologically driven labor market. In terms of unemployment, since January 2020, 
over 10,000 job seekers have registered on the LMIS website. The challenge is that many of these job seekers are unable to meet the requirements of the labor market. And so we must be comforted that this partnership will assist our job seekers who may not need, who may need to reskill and upskill to meet this demand. The flexibility of the UTEX curriculum will certainly aid in this regard. The use of technology has also been channeled in the delivery of our social welfare and security services, which is critical to enhancing the social well-being of the most vulnerable population served by the ministry. In other words, right now, we need technology so that no one will be left behind. And so with this partnership, we must work together to let these agreements in the MOU be action driven. We must comply with the agreement of providing job opportunities through placement, relevant labor market information, and skills training. We therefore urge employers to use the, M the LMIS website for job placement and continue to participate in our labor market and future of work study. In closing, it would be remiss of me not to have expressed gratitude to the hardworking planning team from the ministry and UTEC who are responsible for making this event a success today. I must say a heartfelt appreciation to all who have taken the time out of their busy schedule, especially during this weather, to come here today face to face and those who have joined us virtually. Remember, keep safe, make sure you wear your mask, keep social distancing and sanitize. You cannot be too careful. May God bless and go with you. I thank you. Thank you very much, Simone. And ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived. We are now going to make some minor changes and then we'll be right into the signing of the MOU.
All right, thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen. We are now at the end of the signing ceremony, and I do wish for you a safe journey back to your place of abode. Thank you. <laughs>